Okay, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all, I hopefully back, or anyone that's with us for the first time, to the second of Wei Jing's uh, Minerva lecture series on the rational points on the intersection of two quadrics. Um, as, as was mentioned on, on Monday, these lectures are made possible through a generous donation from the Minerva Foundation, and for the last 10 years, we've been able to bring in um, exciting speakers, such as the one we have today. So I'll turn it over to you, Wei. <laughs> oh. Uh, those of you on the Zoom uh, call, if you would like to ask Wei a question, just unmute yourselves and, and ask away, and your voice will, will boom down from our ceiling in here. So, thanks. All right. Thanks, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, so today, uh, well, I, oops, there's a there's water here. So last time I, uh, my first lecture, I described one type of local to global um, uh, principle, so the so-called Hasse principle. Um, um, so, we, um, so we talk about Hasse principle for solution of a system of equations, um, a variable. So n variable but with a bunch of equation with rational coefficients so today uh, we want to uh, consider a uh, uh, we may think of as a different type of local to global principle uh, where well, if you think about the question we considered last time, we were looking for solutions uh, uh, to the equations with, uh, uh, you know, all the coordinates have, have uh, rational values. But we can also consider, uh, you know, solutions which are kind of a parameter solutions. So maybe a, uh, if you impose some relation between those parameters, uh, then those actually uh, uh, give you some interesting um, well, they, they actually satisfy those equations. So, uh, so this is to say we're looking at uh, solutions, well, sort of sub-variety or sub-scheme. So we look at sub-varieties um, so defined by, by those equations. But of course, that might be too, uh, that might give us too many possibilities because, for example, last time we looked at uh, equation, uh, so, so this can y square being equal to a polynomial of a certain degree. Uh, clearly, the solution, if you impose one condition, say x equals, uh, right, well, say so x equal to a certain number, right, so this is a given number, x equal to a, then y will, there will be kind of two, well, generically two solutions, but anyway, this condition, so this condition defines a, uh, well, everything, yeah, it, 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 so A is in rationals, so, so we get a kind of a family of degree two divisors um, defined over Q. So that might be uh, giving us uh, a, a too many uh, possibilities. So one way of concreting down is to, um, uh, to consider a certain equivalence, equivalence relation uh, so in this case, so the, I mean, one way of generalizing the question of you know, rational number, uh, the rational uh, 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 points is to consider the, the child group. Okay, so let me, let me maybe, maybe call this variety X. So, um, so child X for fixed co-dimension. So this will be the free abelian group generated by, um, uh, by sort of, so irreducible, well, uh, sort of cycle, a group of cycles, um, yeah, so algebra cycles, which, which means Z linear combinations of irreducible um, sub varieties. Uh, so this has a, it's a, it's a, bit, it's a, it's a free abelian group. Um, so we, divide, we consider the quotient by by uh, so rational, so-called rational equivalence, 
sort of this relation. So this is sort of the finest relation you can have in order to have a very good functorial properties. Um, then we get a very, yeah, so modular this relationship. So you get a, you get a abelian group. So this is a abelian group. Um, so this will be uh, what we want to consider today. Um, again, we want to have some kind of local to global uh, phenomenon. So one type of statement we want to consider is uh, what a type of local information might lead to, a, you know, a, a, for example, you know, long triviality for this group, uh, or maybe for actually maybe uh, even some kind of infinite order element. So for that purpose, actually, in this in today's talk, I will consider the the, the, uh, the coefficient in the rational uh, number. So child with a Q coefficient. Ah, sorry, I should have said what is what is. What does the index i mean? So of co-dimension, co-dimension i, cycles. So, <clears throat> so we actually, I mean, we will not write q anymore. So, so q coefficient. So, so today, uh, so I give first example of what uh, 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 we're going uh, to study. So here, so let me recall you one. Uh, one way of stating one con the conjecture of Birch and the Sonner Dyer. So, so here, let's consider the case when uh, when the variety x is is an elliptic curve. So defined by the so equation of y squared being a uh, equal to a cubic polynomial. Where uh, so assume the cubic polynomial has no repeated roots. Um, so again, uh, we should have considered the projective model rather than this affine, affine equation. But anyway, so that only results some difference at infinity. Just what there is potentially one point. Well, in this case, yeah, there, there is one point at infinity. So uh, where the coefficient are q. Um, so, well, I can clear, I can, uh, yeah, I can assume this actually have a z coefficient just by changing variable and so on. Um, so what Birch and Swinder Dyer considered was uh, some, well, what we may call it, some local information from uh, what we did on Monday. So namely, you consider the point modulo p. So, so now I have integral coefficient here. So you can consider the number of solution over z modulo p, so, so the finite field of uh, p elements, where p is a prime number. Uh, again, let's say, yeah, let's uh, ignore finitely many prime numbers. So when the prime p is large enough, this has a well, uh, has a good behavior. So, right, so imagine I, I consider the uh, number of points over uh, z modulo p, uh, and presumably, if, if, if there is a some, uh, I mean, if there are many points, if there are a lot of points defined over Q, if this, this elliptical curve has a lot of rational points, we should expect uh, there are maybe more points modulo P when you vary P in a, in a kind of a consistent way. So one should expect this quantity to be big. So especially if you form uh, if you form uh, the product over all the primes, say not exceeding a certain quantity, let's say n, okay, consider all the prime numbers smaller than n, look at this quantity, this should maybe tell us, um, uh, I, I mean, should give us a way of measuring how many, um, uh, all the, you know, the measuring, um, you know, the, Number of points over over uh, over uh, rational numbers for, for for this elliptic curve. So so the conjecture they made was that indeed the uh, the conjecture they made in the very beginning was that this quantity should behave like uh, log um, 
yeah, log, log n uh, to, to certain, okay, up to maybe some constant uh, to a, a, a integral, to an integer r depends on x. So, um, and they predict uh, rx as the integer is supposed to be the, the rank of this, this group. So again, so this, uh, this was the equation of a, 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 a elliptical curve. So, I mean, what I call the Jacobian variety among this lecture. So it has a group structure, I mean, the Q points have a group structure, a binary group structure. It's actually finally generated according to a result of a model. So you may look at the rank. So the BSD conjecture says that, well, this exponent uh, should be the number of generators in order to generate uh, this abelian, finally generated abelian group. So the, I mean, the remarkable um, uh, feature is that uh, on, the, on this, you know, this side, the quantity is well, it's something from the local information. It's kind of a local counting number of points over finite field, where the uh, their conjecture says actually you can extract the number of generators needed for the model wave group. So this, might, I mean, from my point of view, this is some kind of local to global principle, right? So the left hand side, if 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 you have a large number of points over FP in a consistent way. Uh, then you're expecting to have a very large uh, uh, rank for the uniform curve. And so, of course, this wasn't, this isn't really what we, I mean, nowadays people state the conjecture because <laughs> this turns out to be super strong. I think maybe uh, this was first observed by uh, Goldfield uh, that this left hand side, I mean, this, this quantity, uh, this uh, uh, conjectural asymptotic is so, is so strong that it actually implies something like Riemann hypothesis for the, for the other function attached to this curve, uh, this elliptical curve. So, so in other words, this, if, um, so this, yeah, this is too strong. So, so let me write in this way just. Too strong in the sense you can never, I mean, you, can, you cannot really, <laughs> you cannot really check it. <laughs> Suppose you have an elliptical curve, you will not, it would be very difficult to check if you have such asymptotic. Um, instead, what now we do is to introduce uh, a quantity, I mean, a invariant called the L function. So, so let me recall you. So in this case, I have the Hasse V uh, L function. So we can do this for much, I mean, for, for any, uh, yeah, for any variety x over, over q. So again, let's say I have a good uh, models over integers, at least for prime, I mean, at least which uh, the model behave well when, when you take reduction modulo p for large prime p. So, so I can talk about points um, over finite fields or even extension of FP, the um, F extension. So I can look at this, I can do a counting. Um, and uh, um, you can then produce the following um, expression. Let's say n, um, right, and p to the negative n s, so with s being a complex variable. So you consider exponential this quantity. So this was uh, what we called the, the sort of the local zeta function. Zeta function out of the prime p. Um, so it's a uh, it's right as zeta lower p x and s, where s is a complex variable. Um, so then you can form, well, okay, this, again, this is kind of some local information. So we're collecting number of points over, uh, over some, I mean, this is in some sense computable. 
Mm. Right, so, so this, I can also then form an Euler product over all prime P of the zeta, zeta function. Uh, let's call zeta x s. Oh, yeah, there's a sum here missing. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Uh, n from 1 to infinity, so, yeah. Um, so now we know, I mean, by, well, by a long series of work of many people, um, Grothendieck and Berlin and so on, um, so we know this has a, Decomposition um, into. Um, well, let, let me assume it's, it's it's a smooth projective and so on. So I have a decomposition according to so the, each degree of the cohomology. Let me consider. So, um, so the periodic coefficient, the, the, you know, the Atako, the periodic Atako homology. Um, with S variable, and there is a, it's, it's alternating product, where I goes from zero to twice of a dimension. Um, so in terms of this formulation, so in the case of X being elliptic curve, um, so in this case, this zeta function actually uh, is a, uh, has a simpler form. So it, it has a denominator uh, coming from H1. I'm going to just write as H1. Uh, so this will be right as Hi of X. Then uh, on the numerator is some, some zeta, some zeta function, Riemann zeta function. Some more well understood, or maybe shift of Riemann zeta function. Um, so that essentially uh, new information come from, coming from this high uh, say L function for attached to the elliptic curve. So it turns out uh, using well, I can, in this case, in this example of elliptic curve, at least for prime P large enough, a good prime, so the number of points uh, has the form that in P plus one minus an integer called AP, um, where I can even, um, so yeah, in this case, I can write it more explicitly. So the local, well, the piece factor. Uh, so it looks like, so okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the uh, normalization being, the, the, you know, the unitary normalization rather than a vague number normalization. So I'm, I'm gonna write this as one of alpha p, p to the negative s. 1 over theta p to the negative s, where for alpha p theta p has a property that, so this is equal to a p divided by square root of p, and the product is equal to 1. So, so I'm taking a normalization so that alpha and beta have uh, have an absolute value equal to one for any embedding into a complex number. Uh, so, so here, okay, so right, well, sorry, H1. H1. Um, so I'm kind of shifting a little bit. So here, the, the, yeah, there's maybe here that have, have to put a, some change of variable between those two. So this has added energy for some later formulation. Um, so with this formulation, um, then the, 
conjecture of first sonar her dire can be reformulated in a more kind of checkable way. So this uh, the L function in many cases one can uh, at, at least one can uh, one can talk about uh, its behavior. Um, so in this case one can well their conjecture from from what from, from our point of view also has an embedded conjecture that the L function has has a nice meromorphic continuation and so on. So anyway, so the conjecture says the L function has a uh, is actually holomorphic at s equal to half. And the vanishing order should be equal to the rank. Um, of this finally generated a binary group. So, right, so, so this order is supposed to, to be the same as this quantity here uh, showing up in this exponent. But again, as Goldfield pointed out, this, uh, so that, that asymptotic is very hard to check because it implies Riemann hypothesis for, for this L function. So, so this new formulation directly using L function uh, at least removes you know, the embedded Riemann hypothesis for this L function. Um, right, so again, we, we're, I mean, uh, I'm gonna view this as one type of local to global principle where the left hand side uh, collect you know, the counting points over finite fields uh, where the right hand side is about uh, you know, the number of, well, it's, it's about the global points on, on the CDF curve. Um, well, now I'm gonna try, try to do the same for what I have defined here, you know, the child group. So, so in the case of elliptical curve, the child group here um, almost give you the same as the Moldavian group, uh, except, well, so given, in this case, okay. um, the child group in the degree in the co-dimension one case, um, there is a degree degree map, so goes to Z, um, where the kernel yeah, for X the elliptic curve. Um, so the kernel of the degree map is precisely isomorphic to a group of Q points. Um, so in some sense, our uh, generalization of uh, you know, the question to Chow group exactly uh, specialized to, to the case of a, uh, model V group in the case of the curve. So that is, in one way, justify uh, you know, the generalization. So now, I mean, what can, what do we expect to be true for uh, regarding, you know, regarding the child group of a variety over, over a number of fields? So um, let me start with, so now, okay, now let's say x is more general. Um, smooth projective over Q. Um, so in this case, well, we now, if well, we can look at the complex points, so I can base change to C for complex number, and look at the complex points, then one can use Hodge theory to describe at least partly describe uh, the child group, namely in this case, uh, the say, child degree co-dimension I child group. I can I can look at the cohomology, uh, well the, the singular cohomology. So, so we have a cycle class map. 
um, of this, com uh, this complex manifolds um, set with so the singular cohomologies. Uh, then you can use Hodge theory, so I can consider the intersection with, with the, the, you know, the so-called PP uh, Hodge cohomology, so part of the part of the Durham cohomology. Oh, I, I, right. So, okay. Uh, so, conjecture of Hodge asserts this map. Uh, I mean, it's almost isomorphism. Well, as in the modified version of Hodge conjecture, um, says that this should be at least, well, actually it's surjective if you replace Z by, by Q coefficient. And if I tensor with Q, so this should be surjective. Um, so the map should be surjective. Should be surjective map. Um, So, I mean, we don't know how to prove this, but that doesn't prevent us from maybe making more uh, conjectural description for the child group. But maybe in terms of cohomology theory of different flavor, so this was done at least by, uh, well, already in almost 60 years ago by, by Tate. So Tate look at um, a cycle plus map. Uh, to the uh, tau cohomology, again, uh, in, in the degree of 2i. Um, so the PRD coefficient. Um, well, the image will be invariant by the, well, okay, one needs to make a twist, so the take a twist here. Um, then you look at the Galois invariance. So again, I, can, I should, well, so the right-hand side is a vector space over the periodic numbers, where the left-hand side, well, uh, well uh, we consider it as, as a Q vector space. Um, so Tate made the conjecture that uh, this, you know, the image, again, this is, there's a cycle class map. Um, Conjecture that um, the map should be surjective. Well, if you tensor left hand side with a QP, so, so the image um, should span should span the, the space of all the Galois invariants. Um, so that's one, you know, one part of Tate's conjecture describing the image. Uh, on the other hand, so I, well, he also has a version which looks like Borsman-Dyer conjecture. Namely, one can also look at the uh, attached L function. So I have uh, described here there's a decomposition of the zeta function into, into L function. So that actually, that, so Tate's conjecture has two parts. So it's called one, which describes the image of the cycle class map uh, into the, uh, you know, the periodic et al. cohomology. So secondly, there is a, a version relating uh, the image, at least the, the rank of the image, to, uh, to zeta function, to L function. So, so the order of L function to I S here, okay, S. Um, if you take the uni unitary normalization as I did over here, so the point is I want to have a decomposition of the local L function where if you decompose into irreducible polynomial, I mean, into linear factors of P to the negative S, I want all the, you know, those coefficients to have uh, absolute value equal to one. If you do that normalization, the center, expected center of L function is half 
Oh, uh, then, yeah, then you want to value, look at the value at s equal to 1. Um, so, so the prediction is that this should tell you the rank. Uh, okay, this is, in this case, one expects the other function to have a pole of order being equal to the rank of, uh, so the rank Uh, comma degree two to i, yes. Yeah. Right, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hiding the shift here. I'm taking the center to be half. So. Oh, I'm shifting, I'm twisting by here already. Uh, okay, um, well, I guess my, yeah, so one plus i, all right. So, so the, so the, yeah, so the, the rank of each. Um, well, in, his uh, article proposing the conjecture, so Tate also actually compared you some examples. Um, so he, his computation suggests, well his, well his, his example was actually product, I mean actually power, self product of a elliptical curve. So if you take one elliptical curve, so now I'm gonna change the notation a little bit. So I'm gonna write E, the elliptical curve I gave earlier, and take x to be power of e, so e times e, so, so n times. Um, so he computed the, at least you know, the, um, the image, so he computed what essentially the image of, of this, this cycle has map for this example, this over q, let's impose a condition that this does not have complex multiplication. So in the case of complex multiplication, actually it's easier, but um, it's kind of, um, for today's purpose, I will impose this condition. Um, so essentially Tate actually proved, uh, you know, the Tate conjecture, and at least later on, combining with later work on, on uh, on computation of a uh, uh, relating, uh, uh, you know, the so-called manfred tate group on the power of elliptical curve. So combining with Tate's computation actually shows that Tate one, so I have two parts. So two part, Tate one holds for x being e to the n. Um, uh, for all co uh, for, for, yeah, for all co of the child group. If you, if you look at actually how, I mean, how much is known about this conjecture, they seem to be, um, well, if, if, you want, if you ask the question, what examples of variety uh, we know the Tate conjecture for all co cycles? There are actually very few. I mean, this is one example. Uh, we have some example where you, maybe you know the co-dimension one case or, or some special dimension, but if you want to know all uh, uh, the conjecture for all co-dimension, this is one example. I mean, but okay, you can, I think it is, it is known if you, if you take product of uh, arbitrary number of abelian varieties, as long as each factor has dimension Small, say one or two. So, so, uh, um, so that's for Tate one. So for Tate two, namely, you want to relate uh, the image to the so the zeta function or L function. Uh, what one knows is even, ne even, even less. 
Uh, so in that case, well, now we still, we, we, we do now this uh, statement uh, for, again, for, so for, for power of one single elliptic curve, um, but that, so that, that requires much more recent work on the potential modularity uh, for the for symmetric power of elliptic curve. Uh, so, um, so anyway, so the point is this conjecture is known for power of a single elliptic curve, and possibly yeah you can you can make slightly more general statement, but not really too too much more than that. Um, okay, so that at least take care of the image. So if you look at the, the conjecture of a Birch Snow Dyer, so that, okay, this example of a uh, little curve, the image is rather simple to describe. What is interesting is the kernel. Um, so now we're gonna focus, focus more on the kernel of the cycle class map. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna denote h of i x zero to be the kernel of the cycle class map. Um, so we call this the child group of homologically trivial cycles. Um, so in this case, one may hope, one, one may at least try to mimic this process. Uh, namely, there are two things to do. One is maybe try to give a conjectural description. Uh, Using certain cohomology theory uh, to describe this uh, group. Secondly, one may try to generalize conjecture of a Birch Snow Dyer and relating uh, this group or relating uh, some cohomological defined quantity like this one in terms uh, to, to the L function. So, so this is done by, this is the, so let me. Uh, Okay, we can kind of. We can mimic those two conjectures. So here I have, now I have, ah, I should have written here, that there is a map goes to using the uh, hot shelled spectral sequence. You can relate this to, uh, to the Galois cohomology with the coefficient in. I will really write as h two i minus one. Uh, okay, there's a twist. Let me also give a notation. Maybe let's call this v two i minus one. Indicate it's, it's at a degree two i minus one. Um, so. Then the conjecture are largely formulated by uh, Bellinson. Um, and Bloch Hokkaido. Uh, also has two parts. The first part is uh, this map. So this map is called the well, it's, it's some kind of general uh, periodic analog of so-called Abel-Jacobi map. So the periodic Abel-Jacobi map. Um, so the first conjecture is that the periodic Abel-Jacobi map is actually injective and induces uh, a isomorphism. So, chow. X zero to a tensor Q P. Oh, sorry. I mean, I should have said. Uh, okay, it's more complicated. So one has to. Well, Brohokato found a description or conjecture description of the image, where I, I have already put a subscript here. So this is. So this defined using. Um, So here, this is defined. So let me write this definition here. So 
kind of as, as it's a subspace cut out by um, a PRD Hodge theoretical uh, condition. Namely, if you if you consider the cl those classes, which so um, if you you have to impose, I mean, you have to try to describe what are the possible uh, local localization of those classes at places above above p. So so here, so the precise definition is the following. Um, Kernel of the map from kernel of the map from this, this very group to the local, so, well, the periodic places, QP. Um, So tensor contains a uh, crystalline, crystalline uh, periods, do, periods domain, so B Chris, supposed to be the kernel of this map. So if you view each class here as an extension of, the, uh, of this uh, vector space as a module of the Galois group, uh, you know, by, by the trivial Galois module, then this condition is saying you want those classes to be uh, well behaved, to be sort of crystalline. So namely, they should locally give you uh, a crystalline extension. Um, so that's what this, this condition is, is about. So it's, it's, it's what Borokato imposed, I mean, defined. Uh, so this group is, is now commonly referred as you know, the Borokato Samuel group. EK for Ocato, same group. So it becomes, just, it becomes much more kind of uh, subtle to describe the image when you compare uh, this with uh, the description of K for, for the image of the cycle class. Um, so anyway, so that's the first part. So the second part is the connection to, to L function. Namely, um, one expect the order of the L function, a vanishing order of the L function, um, H two I minus one. So, uh, well, that's why I <laughs> I didn't really write down precisely this normalization here. If if you take the unitary normalization as I mentioned earlier, so that half is the center of the function, expected function equation, then the order of vanishing uh, is supposed to be the rank of this Borja cutoff Seymour group. So, so the dimension of the Seymour group. <clears throat> so, so that's the sort of two parallel uh, uh, sets of conjectures. Uh, right, so, those will be a uh, generalization of the Borchner's one and Dyer conjecture to, to a general variety. Um, so what, I mean, how, what do we know about it? So, um, so we have a lot of results in the case of uh, elliptical curve. So if X is elliptical curve, we have a lot of results. Uh, um, so now, so I want to at least try to state a result when, uh, when the variety is a certain product of elliptic curve. So let me, so let me state uh, the following. So let me, ah, let's con let me consider two elliptic curves. So E1 and E2. So E1 and E2 are two. Elliptic curves over, um, so actually, unfortunately, we don't have results over Q over rational numbers, so I have to go up to certain uh, total real field, so F0, so not Q, although our method, I think, is potentially uh, 
well, can be generalized to cover this case, but for the moment, let's see, I have total real field, uh, but not, not the Q. Um, so I have assumed that they, they are um, uh, non CM, so there's no com complex multiplication, and also they are not isogenous to each other. Uh, isogenous over over, over, over F-bar, over algebra closure, so geometrically non-isogenous. Um, so, mm. so then I also have to assume, uh, all right, let's also take a quadratic extension, which has complex multiplication, uh, uh, same field, sorry, C, uh, same with quadratic extension. So a totally imaginary quadratic extension. Um, so suppose the symmetrical power, nth power of H1, E1, and the symmetrical power N2, or n plus one, h one e two. Suppose both are uh, automorphic, namely they are actually attached to um, automorphic representations. So, automorphic, automorphic. So here, then. So with those hypotheses, um, so the theorem is that, so in the case where well, this conjecture holds, well, at least the second part, sorry, the second part, so the order of the L function for the product, um, Tensor product if the order of L function is zero, um, okay, again I have to normalize so the L function has a center s equal to half, then this implies the same or group. over this quadratic extension. So again, everything, ah, base change is quadratic extension over F, so over F. Then the same or group has rank zero um, as predicted by the second part of this conjecture. So, so um, one should view this as, you know, one, Hello, well, evidence to that conjecture when you consider uh, the variety being, so, being the product of E1 to the nth power, nth power times E2 to the n plus, um, let me see, n plus one nth power. So, uh, although it's not exactly because this, is, this L function is not exactly uh, the L function for this product, rather, it is a certain factor. So, so the L function for, for this product will decompose as a, a product of L function. One of, them, one of the factors is over this form. Um, so, yeah. So, um, right, so, um, so that's one of the theorem we can state. So this is joint. I should write it so this result theorem is so joined with um, Yifeng Liu, uh, Niang Xiao, Yi uh, Chao Tian, Xin Wen and myself. So, um, so, um, so this is 
you know, a result we can prove regarding sort of higher, higher dimensional um, um, cases. Okay, here n is at least, or n is at least one. <laughs> so maybe I should remark on this condition of automorphic. Um, so by recent results of a uh, um, Newton of Jack Thorne, uh, we actually we actually know the symmetrical powers are modular if the base field is Q, so, which unfortunately be, is being excluded in the result. However, you can start with a result of a Newton and Thorne, namely you take a curve over Q, which are which are known to have uh, automorphic symmetrical powers. Then you take a solvable base change to certain total, I mean, to any total real fields. Uh, over there, then you, you will get, you use solvable base change uh, of Arthur and Colosio, so you can, you can produce, of course, a, a large uh, classes of examples here. Um, so that is just trying to convince you the results, the results here are not empty. <laughs> so you can produce really good amount of examples. Um, okay, here I was also being uh, implicit, uh, uh, being explicit about which prime p I used. I, that conjecture relies on the choice of the coefficient, uh, the p -arg number, I mean the, the prime p, uh, the prime number p. So here I should say that for, yeah, for, I mean for almost or for p large enough. Uh, but you can describe. I mean, it's it's explicit what conditions. Uh, we need in order to have this result for, for, for such prime p. Um, so, right, so that's the um, results, the key result on present. Um, so I should then remark that, well, we don't know anything, I mean, about the first part. So, we, so here the result is uh, for the second part. Oh, that's that's our sort of artifact of the proof. So in the proof, we had we had to use certain result for Shimura varieties defined over uh, for certain Hermitian spaces attached to same fields. They they are not compact over Q. So we need the compactness uh, in order to apply results about non vanishing of a torsion cohomology due to say Karajan and shots. Uh, so that's, that's just, so actually, yeah, so the rest is, seems to be not much dependent on, 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 uh, on this hypothesis. Yeah. Um, oh, I should have, should have repeated for the, for the audience on, the, on Zoom. So Peter's question was, why did I have to assume the field is, uh, is not Russian numbers? Um, Right, so that, that's the key result. So I want to, um, um, so when did I start actually, Chris? Okay, so like 10 minutes? Okay. Um, so I can then, maybe I can describe, um, um, So uh, yeah, I want to describe maybe one part of the uh, the pool. Um, what what what's been you know the, one of the key constructions. Um, So the results are actually more general than what, what I stated. Um, so there are two, I mean, two parts of, of the proof. Why is that right as one part is, is some special value. Uh, 
special value for L function, special value formula. And second part is uh, con congruence um, of, of, of cycles on Shimura varieties. Um, so here I have to, um, so I can start with my quadratic extension f over f0. So the automorphic condition allows us to attach uh, unitary, I mean automorphic, automorphic representations on unitary group. So you can consider permission space. B, well, I should maybe I should change the notation. Let's put a W. N and W N plus one of dimension N and N plus one. So those are Hermitian spaces. Hermitian relative to this quadratic extension. Um, furnished by embedding long non-degenerate embedding, so the complement, orthogonal complement is non-degenerate. So this will produce a group called a G being the product of an associated unitary group, so viewed as an algebraic group over the base field F0. Um, so the special value formula um, predicts a relation So, right, so the automorphic condition allows us to attach a uh, in the automorphic representation G pi, pi n, pi n plus one. So those are automorphic representation. Um, G um, on the product, the special value formula basically says a long dimension of L function, so this is a part of, part of the so-called gangros prasad conjecture. And in this case, proved, uh, well, proved in a, in a long series of work, um, combined with contribution of many people. Um, so the, the output of this conjecture is that if you have a non-vanishing L value, so, so, the, so, so the order of the order of L function for the corresponding L function. Well, let me write it this way. So this is basically uh, we output non-vanishing integral of functions. Um, attached to, um, so yeah, so the phi is some function on pi in this product, like a square. So anyway, the, the, the punchline is that you get some long zero quantity from, from the long of L function, and this right hand side it is a long vanishing of certain integral uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of specific automorphic form on the group G. Um, so, okay, up to certain, you know, local conditions. So, so this is, you know, this is, one can make this more precise. But the, out, the, the output is something we can, you know, you can, you can try to connect to cycles on Shimura varieties. Um, in this case, actually, the important thing is both G and H are, in this case, what's useful is both are definite at, infinite, at Archimedean places. Um, so that's sort of the first half. 
uh, first step. Uh, the second, second thing one can do is, um, so consider using, well, in the case of indefinite, so here I was talking about definite thing, then, then um, the, you know, this group of identity, I mean, this, this is identity points divided by rational points. Those are pretty easy to understand. In the definite the case, um, there's no interest in geometry and so on. So to bring in the uh, geometry of Shimura variety, I have to switch. So I have to switch to formation space Wn, Wn plus 1 being indefinite. But actually, more precisely, I need them to have specific signature. So the signature at the Archimedean place must be of the form so n minus 1 and 1 for the smaller one and n1 for the lar for, for, for the other space. So, um, so that would give me some uh, well the same group G so I can attach in this case then I have some interesting uh, Algebra geometry, so namely from the Shimura variety attached to G, and, and also the subgroup H. Okay. So in this case, the large Shimura variety is essentially a product. So uh, and the smaller one is, uh, in some sense, well, it's 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 almost some diagonal. I mean, except it's not diagonal because those two are not the same. Rather, it's, it's, it, this is a, a group which is slightly bigger. So in this case, um, the cycle we called, we give a name called um, so the resulting, so those are resulting uh, varieties over, over this quadratic extension, F. Um, so those are called arithmetic Uh, diagonal cycle where uh, it has the half dimension if you move, uh, if you give an integral model over the row of integers of this number field. So in that sense, it behaves like some diagonal cycle because we have you know, half dimension. And so now what happens is that if you if you impose certain uh, sort of Level structure for for the Shimura varieties, uh, so that they have bad reduction actually. So at those places with bad reduction, their uh, special fiber. So in this case, the special fiber. So I can be more precise later on if you want. Uh, but the special fiber at those sort of places which has bad reduction. Uh, if you choose your level. To be a certain parahoric level, then those fiber looks like some. Uh, it's like a one irreducible, one big irreducible component, together with many, uh, like broom like So they, you know they, they grew a lot of projective space here. In this case, some projective space uh, of uh, well, let's see. In this case, well, for both I have to do the same. So maybe for a suitable dimension of projective space. Um, where they intersect with a large irreducible component at a certain Fermat hypersurface. So, so you have a full understanding. So the point is those projective space, they are kind of parameter, I mean, they, they are, uh, yeah, they, you know, the projective space, um, this is a distribution collective components. The components are parameterized exactly by what happened in the first, first part. Attached to, I mean, it's parameterized by um, by space which are attached to a definite Hermitian space. So that's where you make a connection between the two seemingly disjoint construction. One has no interest in algebra geometry because th those are essentially some finite sets. If you if you divide the right, right hand side by by a certain compact subgroup, where the second uh, you know, those uh, uh, cycles, diagonal cycles on Shimura variety actually have interest in geometry, but they are collected by, the, you, can, you can see those spaces on, on the special fiber of a battery reduction. 
So that was the essential, I mean, one of the starting step in the proof of this result. And I'm like over time already three minutes, so let me, let me stop here. So for Tate conjecture, I said um, here, right? So I was saying if, one, if you ask the question for what type of varieties do we know Tate conjecture for all dimension, all codimension cycles? The answer is, seems to be, well, it depends on part one or two. So for part one, we know a little more. I think uh, people know that if you take a product of a billion variety, uh, if each factor is dimension one or two. The small dimension. I mean, okay, there are other examples, maybe uh, very, uh, for, for divisors, but not, usually you don't know the conjecture for all co-dimension cycles. And if you want to know for the second part of the conjecture uh, regarding the L function, uh, we, we know even less because that relies on results about L function, behavior of L function, so necessarily involve uh, modularity result or potential modularity. So, oh, no, <laughs> I mean, take conjecture one, oh, no. Oh, um, so there is a uh, chance to prove, uh, if you assume the left-hand side, well, you do two things. One, you have to replace the left-hand side by a p-adial function, <laughs> rather than the, rather than the, uh, um, the, the, you know, this Hasse v l function. So you, you replace this by a p-adial version, and if you assume the l function has rank one, then you can prove the right hand side has rank one. But combining a, again, there will be two uh, type of ingredients. One is a special value formula. So in that case, you need a PLA gross type formula. So which uh, Daniel Dizili and myself were trying to get some instances at least uh, for, for representations with, with, you know, almost all, almost all places good reduction. I mean, very much close to good reduction or very specific ramification. So the second type result will be uh, like uh, the, uh, the argument in, 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 the, in the, the second type of ingredients I described, namely using kind of OER system. I think you, Chris, you know that. It's a, uh, so either you can use, yeah, use the, the five author paper we, we put uh, some result such as if you know the diagonal cycle has long zero image in the same group, then the same group has rank one, or we can also use your ongoing work with. So that's the second type. Uh, but that re re replaces, you have to replace left-hand side by the PRDL function, where the, you get a, a conclusion where the rank is one. So, um, so secondly, you can hope, so to pull a result where left hand side you have rank one for the complex L function, but the right hand side uh, you replace, well, uh, you consider the child group, but you only prove some lower bound of the, of the damage. So, and that seems to be, <laughs> seems to take, need more work. So. Uh, right, so that, that's for the, for the potentially non zero rank case. Oh, right, yeah. I almost forgot to repeat your question. So. <laughs> okay, uh, um, yeah, any? I don't, I don't see how to use here, so I don't want to touch this. <laughs> I'll mute themselves, okay. Um, 
What? <laughs> yeah, show said, yeah, show someone. I mean, uh, Peter says show someone, and 